Federal judges in two different states have issued contradictory decisions that could drastically impact access to a drug used in nearly all medication abortions here in the United States. A, in Texas, Trump appointed U.S. District Judge Matthew Kaczmarek ruled uh, to pause FDA approval of the abortion pill Nefepristone for one week. The Biden administration has already appealed that ruling. Uh, and within minutes of the Texas decision, Obama appointee U.S. District Judge Thomas Rice issued a ruling in a separate case in Washington state that blocks the FDA from suspending FDA approval of the drug. Rice said his ruling only applied to the 17 states and the District of Columbia, whose Democratic attorneys general sued to protect access to Mephepristone. Uh, joining me now is Congresswoman Barbara Lee of California. Congresswoman, it's great to see you again. Thank you for coming back on the show. Um, this is an issue that is, as we've discussed many times on the show with you, extremely personal to you. In 2021, you shared your story of getting an abortion in Mexico after you found out you were pregnant at 16 years old. How crucial is it that minors have access to this care in this country? Thanks for having me. Uh, glad to be with you again. It is very crucial that uh, everyone have access to medication abortion, mifepristone. Uh, let me just say this is uh, another uh, court ruling, a radical court ruling by a judge from Amarillo, Texas. I mean, can you imagine? And without getting into all of the legal uh, aspects of this, uh, I want to make sure that everyone knows that uh, medication abortion is legal still and it's available. But we have to really understand that this decision is just another sinister move to try to uh, get to the place where this country will uh, enact a national abortion ban. It's the most dangerous decision since Roe, and we all have to fight back. Um, we know that mefepristone is just one of two pills used in tandem to induce an abortion. Using just one abortion pill instead of two brings down efficacy, and it could worsen side effects. And we're seeing a judge's ruling infringe on basic common sense health care here. Right, and the American Medical Association issued a, a very clear uh, decision uh, and a p opinion about the dangers in uh, this decision. Uh, uh, this is this uh, medication abortion, mifepristone, is also used for uh, miscarriage management. It's used for a variety of medical issues. And let me just also say, this sets a terrible precedent. I mean, med uh, FDA approves the safety and efficacy of our medication. Can you imagine now the chilling effect and the types of uh, precedent this sets where for other types of medicines that you may have in your medicine cabinet for other types of, of medical issues. Uh, and so this is very dangerous, not only because it's dangerous in terms of uh, our right to our reproductive justice and freedom, but it's very dangerous because it puts the FDA, it puts us on a slippery slope where FDA will be undermined and not able to uh, ensure the safety and efficacy of, of other drugs. So this is very serious and we can't let this go down like this. And so we are fighting back as co-chair of the Pro-Choice Caucus with Congresswoman uh, Diana DeGette. We've got a plan and we're working very hard to make sure that uh, we push back on this in many ways. But I want to reiterate, it's still legal and it's still safe and it's available uh, throughout the country. Let me ask you about um, the situation we find ourselves in in terms of how to fight back, as you are saying right now, um, with these conflicting rulings out of Texas and Washington. Uh, it's really put abortion providers uh, in limbo. And some clinics have vowed to continue prescribing mifepristone, even if Judge Kaczmarek's ruling remains in place after this week. Uh, your colleague, Democratic Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, has said that the Biden administration should also ignore this ruling. And I wanted to get your thoughts on that. What, what do you make of that call? Well, the Biden administration, uh, the president issued, I think, a very strong statement about what, first of all, what he intends to do in, in terms of this appeal. And secondly, uh, why we have to understand that this is another step toward uh, national, a national abortion ban. And I also have to say that he, and I think this is very correct, that we have to remember there's a political aspect of this. The American public wants the availability of the of the reproductive choices, reproductive freedom, reproductive ju justice, to be able to make one's own decision about their health care. 
And so the president, in his statement, talked about the political aspects. The public wants to make sure that uh, people have that, that, op that right. And what is taking place is those rights are being taken away now. So I think that's what we have to really focus on and make sure that we engage in elections so that we can elect at, at all levels uh, people who care about people's ability to make their own health care decisions about their own bodies. What concerns do you have that Republicans will come after other basic health care medications, such as birth control, next? And, and how are you and your Democratic colleagues working to avoid what happened with Roe versus Wade or with abortion by fighting back against these attacks uh, on other potential uh, rights at this moment by Republicans? Sure, and there are many uh, challenges that are coming up. I mean, you mentioned uh, contraception or birth control pills. We see them beginning to uh, move on that. And so we have a, a series of bills in the House. Of course, you know, we're in the minority, but that doesn't mean we're not going to keep fighting. But we have legislation to deal with all of the travel issues, you know, all of the issues around the FDA and many, many issues that uh, really uh, the Republicans are trying to uh, move forward to pass, but we're going to do everything we can do to stop them because public sentiment in this instance is in and the public does not want Republicans to go after people's own personal decisions about their health care. So this is part of what we do as members of Congress is organize with our outside partners, which the activists and our outside groups are doing a phenomenal job with our pro-choice caucus, our Democratic caucus, to make sure that we fight back and to make sure that the public's voices uh, are heard in a way that come election time, uh, we know who to vote for and who not to vote for, who's on our side and who's not on our side. The public is with us in this, amen. Uh, Congresswoman Barbara Lee, it's always a pleasure. Thank you so much for your time this evening. I greatly appreciate it as always.